Hi guys, Bill Yaley here in my basement, or the Mad Scientist Lab as I like to call it. I've been um, been looking through my old books uh, lately, and one of my favorites from when I was a kid, uh, I was probably about 18 at the time that I got this. This is uh, Craig Andrew Anderton's Electronic Projects for Musicians. And I, you know, I, I don't think I ever really built any one of these projects all the way through. Uh, wow, look at this. Now that vinyl is making a comeback and everybody's got a uh, record player that goes to a USB port, you know, hey, I can play that thing again, right? Um, anyway, <clears throat> so I, I never really worked on any of these projects at the time, or at least not all the way through. So I thought, you know, it would be cool to come at it now, you know, being in my, my 50s and having a gray beard instead of being a teenager trying to be the next Eddie Van Halen, um, you know, to try, to try to work on some of those things, try to modernize them a little bit. Um, anyway, the idea of building your own stuff, the DIY spirit, is totally part of the kind of things that I do. You know, this is my... Uh, my number one guitar that I like to play and it's made out of spare parts and stuff that I've gotten off of eBay for 99 cents here and there and it, I mean it's got an old drawer pull there uh, you know I, I know the volume knob is like from the 1960s uh, this thing is probably older than that maybe from the 40s don't know um, anyway be all that as it may it just seems like something that, that I'd like to do. Um, what else? Um, you know, I guess for you guys that uh, may be just, you know, hearing about me and the cigar box guitar and everything like that, uh, I want to show you guys um, some other books. Now, I started this guy... One Man's Trash, A History of the Cigar Box Guitar. I probably started this 10, 12 years ago, and it, it took me a good, a good five years to track all this stuff down. You know, and you know, say what you will, it, it's, you know, some of the stuff is just copied from the original sources. I've tried to add a few comments here and there. You know, this is the second edition, so this is the one that's got all the corrections and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, I, I, I spent a lot of time reading through all these things about people from the Civil War onwards. Um, so we're talking like 1860s, and some of the examples in the first part of the book are even before that, uh, going back to like, I think, 1777. Uh, but anyway, be that as it may. So um, there's a whole mindset that comes with building a cigar box guitar because the rules no longer apply. You know, cigar box guitarists, we like to say there are no rules. That's almost right. <clears throat> I like to say that the only rules we have are the rules that we make for ourselves. And sometimes just giving yourself one rule um, you know, to stay away from something, or that you're going to do something intentionally, you know, that's that's a rule, or, or it's at least sort of a guiding post of what you're going to try to do for whatever project it is, you know, and I'm just notoriously cheap, because <laughs> uh, I grew up, and I never really asked for anything, um, or if I, if I did, I, I, I really, really wanted something dash my parents for it. I was much more resourceful. <clears throat> I would spend my time to do stuff rather than spending money to do stuff. Um, and th there were things like, I, I remember I wanted an EQ for my guitar at the time, and you know, not, not just any EQ. I didn't want the little, um, you know, stomp box style. I wanted like a full rack, because Back then, it, you were cool if you had the, the entire rack system and all that business. So anyway, I started looking at one, and it was like 400 bucks at the time. You know, and this is, what, uh, mid-80s. Uh, 
1980s or so, so 1985, about then. Well, I found an EQ for about a tenth of the price. So I found an EQ going for 40 bucks. Now, it wasn't a piece of rack-mounted gear, but it was a pretty nice stereo EQ. You know, it had a pretty decent, you know, frequency spread across each one of the little knobs. So uh, it worked. I did a lot of the, the early gigging and the, a lot of the early recordings through that EQ. And I don't know, I always kind of enjoyed the fact that I did something for a tenth of the price. You know, spending forty dollars instead of four hundred made me. It made me feel good. Plus, I could tweak the sound of my guitar and sound a little bit different than everybody else. And I think that's been my guiding philosophy for a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, mostly because I just can. I, I, I just I like to build stuff, and I love the fact that I can do it for almost nothing. Um, now, back to the guitar. I may have spent 45 bucks building this thing. Um, I think the first electric guitar that I built uh, may have cost like $150 in materials. And I thought, you know, okay, that's pretty cool. And um, I built another one and I only spent 15. There's my rule at, you know, one tenth. It went from 150 to 15. And then I thought, all right, now I have to do it again. And build a guitar for a dollar and fifty cents, and I did it. It sucked, but <laughs> the point is, it it really worked. I mean, it was like a um, I don't know. A, it was a dowel, a small cardboard uh, Swisher Sweets box, and I think I just I actually used the piezoelectric buzzer as both the uh, the pickup and the bridge. I think I just glued the bridge straight to the thing. Um, two strings that I dug out of the trash. Um, so yeah, just a dollar fifty two string guitar, electric, and it sa it sounded pretty cool. You know, wasn't anything to get really excited about. But I proved my point that I could do it for a tenth of the price again. Um, so anyway, that's the kind of mindset coming full circle back around to what I was talking about before is uh, that's kind of the way I wanted to go through this. Now, th the last publication date of this thing was in 1980, and you know, we're in 2019 now. Uh, some of these parts aren't made anymore, and uh, kind of, you can see all my post-it notes there. I've gone through and looked at uh, some of the cool projects, and yeah, there's, there's some things like dual op amps that are no longer made. Um, and, you know, in the course of, you know, before doing this video, I uh, started looking online for where can I get these things. Some stuff is still available, which is kind of cool. Um, but some of the amplifier chips, particularly the dual op amp, and there's uh, the, the power amp for the, the little uh, miniature practice amp that he has in here, those are hard to find or they just don't exist anymore. Anyway, so it's it's my mindset. Let's find something that we can substitute for it. It may not be pin for pin, um, like the dual op amp. Uh, this in these projects he uses. Uh, I have that part number here. Let's see. He uses a RC forty seven thirty nine or an XR forty seven thirty nine. It's a dual op amp and it has 14 pins, you know, and I've got like a hundred uh, LM358s, it's a dual op amp, but it's like half the pins, um, you know, and then I think, well, you know, for all of us guitar effects, uh, you know, weenies out there, we like to play around with putting different chips in, and you've got, you know, ones that are, are favored for the Tube Screamer. You've got these low noise versions. Um, and I don't have those part numbers memorized. I, I just have a batch of LM358s because they were cheap. So that's why I have a hundred of them. Uh, so anyway, that's kind of the plan. Um, 
going to go through this and do a couple of projects in follow-up videos to this. Uh, I'm also trying something new. I'm, uh, I'm signing up to be an Amazon affiliate. So in the description of this video, I'm going to put uh, some links to the Craig Anderton book and also, also to my own. So you'll see links to these guys in the comments below. It's an affiliate link with Amazon, which means if you click on it and you buy it from that link, I get a tiny little reward, you know, like 50 cents or something like that. I don't know how much it is. Um, but anyway, so you don't have to buy it from that link, but if, if you do, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, that's awesome. All right, so trying something new here, guys. going to try to make more and more videos about cool stuff and how to do it on a shoestring budget. All right, cool. See you guys later.